Hey, so if you're renting a motorbike from Tijit, um, these are some of the tips that I found to be helpful. Uh, we did a trip from Ho Chi Minh City up to Hanoi in about three weeks. And here's everything I learned so far. Um, so first off, you definitely want to make sure everything is working properly. Um, if you want to come closer, I'll show you like on our bike, some things that specifically we found didn't work well is the mirror. This mirror actually kind of rattled. So as it was going down the highway, it kind of went like that. It was just very vibrating. So make sure like take it out for spin, see the mirrors are not vibrating. And then uh, our dashboard light didn't work and we didn't find out until the first day. Um, and it was an easy fix. So we got it fixed up in the lot. Uh, the ha headlight beam, if you come to the front, the headlight beam here is not very bright. So this is as bright as it gets. So that's just normal. It's just like, there's nothing they can do about that. Um, what else to say? Oh. Yeah, so the other thing is that um, a tip that I can offer is like these helmets, you can actually pack them here. This is something I bought off Amazon myself and it's very easy and convenient because you install this and then when you get into a city, you just lock it or if you park overnight, you just lock it so you don't have to bring your, your helmet inside. Otherwise, you have to open up the trunk every time you want to lock it up. So this is very convenient for storing a helmet and uh, you can purchase this for like five bucks up. Amazon before coming here. Definitely get this handlebar bag. Um, I think they sell it for eight dollars. Um, I think I'm actually going to take this home. And you put your battery bank in here, you can put your sunglasses case, and even if it's raining, you can put your phone here. Um, so what we found that you didn't really need um, is the kind of the cell phone holder because the cell phone holder they provide here is actually a really nice one. Is like opens up like that you slide your phone in but you do need to take off your case um, and then you just close it up and it's not going anywhere it's actually way better than the quala that was originally thinking of uh, using okay um other stuff to mention uh get definitely get the extended rack because um putting the bag like on this tiny little rack is not going to work out no matter how small your bag is um okay shifting the gears this no one at Tajit would explain to me properly. This is the first time I rode a semi-automatic uh, transmission bike. And if you come here, I'm going to show you the correct way. Come closer. Come closer to me. The correct way to shift these gears. So you come into neutral. Neutral is where you start off with. And then you can shift into any of these gears while you're standing still. But the one with the highest acceleration is gear one. The next highest is gear two. So when you're taking off from intersection, usually you're starting off from gear one or gear two, but then they don't have a high top speed. Gear one, gear two, like can only go up to 20. So immediately right after you want to shift to three or four. Three only goes up to 40 and then four can go up to like 80 if you really push it. Um, but we find with two people, the max really a good range you're going at is like 60. Most of the locals drive at 50. Um, and then, Upshifting is pretty standard and convenient because when you're upshifting, uh, you can feel um, the, the bike like it won't just it just won't go up any higher, and then you need to shift up, right? Um, so you can get a feel for it. Um, but as a general rule of thumb, upshifting from one to two, you're probably about like around ten, and then going to two to three, you're about like twenty to forty. And then three to four, anything above 40, you're going to go from three to four. It's the downshifting. We go further. It's the downshifting that I have problem with that always kind of gives me a kick like that when I'm downshifting. And nobody at TG will explain to me properly until I looked up on the internet on, on YouTube. Basically, if you're downshifting from the highest gear, which is gear four to gear three, you need to be like traveling below 40 kilometers probably between 25 to 40 is a good, good range. And then anything between three and two, you need to be below 20 kilometers an hour um, to not get that kick, unless you're going downhill. If you're going downhill, you don't hear the engine revving, then potentially you can downshift uh, at a higher uh, kilometers per hour. Um, you just kind of get a feel of it. If you feel like it's getting a kick, try downshifting at a lower speed. Um, yeah, so that can help with downshifting. Uh, what else to say? Oh, here, come come closer. <laughs> the gas tank. This gas tank, um, for a full tank of gas, it costs about probably 
thousand, I would say. Um, usually, we never try to get the gas tank all the way to red, uh, which maybe fill up what, with one bar left, and that's about fifty, uh, fifty thousand. And then the full tank of gas will get you around a hundred kilometers, depending on the terrain. Um, what else is there to say? I think that's about it. I want to talk about for now. Oh, when you are getting off the when you're getting off the bike, right? This is gonna be super hot. Like even now, we we rode this maybe like not even ten minutes, and it's like hot to the touch already. If you're riding for more than an hour, you probably want to take a break to let the engine cool off. Um, and then the passenger, as you're getting off, you definitely don't want to touch this tailpipe. You can burn your your legs if you do that. Um, and it's nice to have like carabiners because you can strap things to this rack right at the front. If you have some like groceries, you can use these carabiners to clip it here. And then so it's not going anywhere, right? Um, yeah, that's about it. So hopefully this has helped. Uh, if I think of any other tips, I'll add in like after. Hey, Editor Jay here. Um, if you're finding this video helpful, please consider giving a sub, sub to the channel. would be great. Uh, liking and commenting on the video as well. Um, also, if you're just interested in more in the day-to-day -day of what it feels like going from Ho Chi Minh to uh, uh, Hanoi, uh, feel, I'm going to leave the playlist of our daily vlogs. So feel free to check that out. Um, we do get into more details about like the exertions that we do on a day-to-day -day basis as well as some of the challenges that we run into. You want to have these masks because the pollution in Vietnam is really bad. Um, even in the mountains, I find that you need these masks. And if you're in the city, you want a double mask unless you get a K95 mask. Because come here closer, I'll show you like this mask I just took out today. And you can see how dirty it is already on the inside from the pollution. Anyways. Yeah, so hopefully. And every day when we do laundry, the clothes are always very dirty. Yeah, very dirty. Yeah. All right. Oh, one last tip is get long pants because that allows you one less spot to like put on sunblock. Same with like these long sleeve shirts and also riding gloves. I don't have the gloves because we already packed it up, but gloves like just cover up head to toe. <laughs> All right. Okay, done. Okay, one other. Uh, tip I forgot to mention is get the helmet with the visor because a lot of times you're going through rainy stuff and this can also help with um, not just rain sometimes like the big trucks they'll like spit out like dust and it also helps with that and it helps protect you uh, against like bugs at night um, there's certain sections where like bugs are just like everywhere and so you definitely want the visor Okay, one other tip is that if you're locking, putting your scooter um, in a public place, you can use the back side of this key to close off the gap here. Because apparently a lot of these keys, they work on the same scooters. Uh, so this is just an added bit of protection. Uh, so you turn like that, and that closes it. And then you open it again. And if you're parking it in like um, public, parking spot that you're, that you're paying for you always leave it in neutral so that the parking attendant they can move it around otherwise you turn the steering wheel like that and then you lock it and then the steering wheel won't be able to um, won't be able to go no dedicated camera on the inside so I'm not sure if you can see that but that's where the camera is and it has a recording button on the top here that you can just click so like while you're driving you click it with, with your hand and you can take photos and videos that way but then at the same time if you want to keep both hands on the steering wheel you can actually use uh, your voice to activate the the, um, the video and audio, uh, function video and photo function um, the other great thing about these glasses is that you can actually uh, listen to music uh, while you're wearing them as well. Um, so it's definitely helpful like on those long drives, um, especially if you're doing a solo um, to uh, avoid some of the boredom perhaps. Um, so that's another tip. Um, another thing that um, you might want to purchase before leaving is a carabiner like this one. 
Um, so this is a little bit different than a normal carabiner because a normal carabiner is just one big gate, but this carabiner has a little smaller gate on the bottom. Um, so what I found is a lot of the hotels in Vietnam, they use still use like physical keys um, along with a digital card. So the digital card, uh, it just used to power up the, the power in the room. Um, and then that will usually be attached to a physical key that you use to open the door. Um, so usually what, what will happen is like when you arrive and check into a hotel, you need to take that key with you every time you leave, right? Um, and then if you're switching hotels like every other night, it's like really a huge hassle to like try to get this key onto a new carabiner uh, every time. So that's why I get these carabiners because this split gate, I'm not sure if you can see it here. Um, if you click that open, you can just slot in that key very easily on the bottom there. And then um, you can still attach it to other stuff. Um, and then the great thing is that you can actually take apart the, the, the hotel key with the digital card. So that you keep the digital card inside the hotel room at all times. So it's powering up uh, the hotel. Um, so you can still charge your electronics while you're like exploring during the day. Um, so definitely get a carabiner, maybe not like this, but just something to hold hold on to the keys. Um, and I'll leave a link to the description for this in the video if you're interested in purchasing the, this exact one. Um, maintenance of bikes. So the bikes um, are supposed to be maintained every 1,000 kilometers by getting their engine oil changed. Um, so what that usually means is if you're going from Ho Chi Minh to Hanoi, that's about like over 2,000 kilometers. So you want to get a oil change in the middle, uh, which is somewhere around Da Nang. Um, however, uh, in addition to that, what we did is that we just really didn't want the bike to break down in the middle of the road. Um, so the great thing about Tiji, uh over other companies is that they have like satellite offices in both Da Lat, Da Nang, and Hanoi, in addition to Ho Chi Minh. So anytime we went, went into a city where there was a Tijit office, we would just like schedule some time to go visit it that office and just ask the people there to like check over the bike just to make sure everything's been work working fine um so we did that in the lot and uh, they were able to change engine oil for us for free which is great um really great customer service and then we did it again in Danang, and the guy just kind of oiled the chain for me um <coughs> so definitely um that's another tip that you can do uh especially if you don't want the bike to break down in the middle of the road the engine oil change is not that expensive um we just went to a normal mechanic instead of going to a honda specific one like they should suggest it and it was only like a hundred thousand uh Viet Dong, which is about like four or five bucks okay um and then uh in terms of the route okay uh the route that what we did um we took three weeks going from ho chi minh to uh hanoi and i think if i were to do this trip again like three weeks is the correct amount of time i think it gives you a lot of time to explore as well as like um you're not too tired like you don't need to travel every day but ho chi minh to da Nang, there really wasn't a lot of like interesting things to see other than uh dalat um, so if you for sure know you want to like check out the beaches, sure, yeah, like you do the whole section from Ho Chi Minh to Hanoi. But like honestly, their beaches are like nothing to write home about. It, it, like you really want to go to a, um, one of the islands off the mainland uh, if you want to experience really nice beaches. Um, so and from Ho Chi Minh to Da Nang, there really wasn't a lot of things to see. Like I said, other than a lot, we really enjoyed that a lot. Um, so if I were to do this whole trip again, I think I would just shorten it to two weeks and then start off in Da Nang and then go from Da Nang to Hanoi uh, or maybe Hanoi to Da Nang. Um, the other great thing is that Da Nang is a major um, international airport. Um, so a lot of the flights getting out of and into Da Nang is actually cheap, pretty cheap, like cheaper than Hanoi. Um, so definitely like do your research uh, to see which route best suits you because like, Three weeks from Ho Chi Minh to Hanoi is like a good amount of time. But then I think you you probably like have a more relaxed and enjoyable pace just doing the Nang to Hanoi. Um, and you're not going to miss a lot um, by skipping over Ho Chi Minh to Da Nang. Um, okay. 
Ah, so water pack. Yeah, so in terms of uh, like staying hydrated, um, you can fill up water at uh, most of the gas stations for free um, instead of buying uh, bottled waters. And we carry it like a, like a three liter water pack that my girlfriend um, put in her backpack. So instead of like stopping every once in a while to like drink water, we would just like drink out of that water pack as we're riding because it has like, the hose that comes out from the back. Um, so that can save you some time, um, if, especially like if you're on a highway and you need to pull over and you need to start again, it's gonna like eat into a lot of your time. Um, carabiners we already talked about. And this is just like a miscellaneous tip is that you're gonna see a lot of like cows and animals on the highway. Um, a lot of people riding like backwards on the highway. Um, so definitely be like aware of that. And because there's a lot of cows on the highway or on the road, you're going to see a lot of cow dung as well. Um, so just make sure you don't ride into them because they can be quite slippery. Um, yeah, so that's about it. Um, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. Um, and maybe you've already done the trip yourself um, and can provide some uh, tips uh, for other travelers so make sure to leave them in the comments below um, and is there any i don't know uh, tips that i must, might have missed uh, make sure to write them in the comment section below any questions you have also leave them there uh, i'll try to get to them as soon as i can all right peace so just before i end the video the final tip that i can offer you is that tg actually makes some great videos um, about the whole trip um, they really go into details about like uh, route planning about how to ride the bike so I would just go check out their video uh, YouTube channel um, there's some really great resources um, in addition uh, in terms of route planning I just remember now is that do not rely on Google Maps um, Google Maps is like very um, inaccurate um, so Tajit offers a maps.me um, kind of like uh, custom map that they made on their website um, so you, you you could download that before you're starting your trip uh, or if you're not too tech savvy while you're in their Tajit office they can probably help you set it up on your phone um, and just following that map is so much better than using google maps um, so typically what we did is we would follow that map um, for most of the distance and then once we actually get into the city and we need to go find a hotel or like a specific location that's when we actually use uh, google maps so here in vietnam you need to start going like before this light goes to zero because everybody's moving already when you're stopped at a light like this to go from four to neutral you can actually shift up and then shift up again to one. Taking off a of one is better than uh, neutral. <laughs> but you can also take off from two. <laughs>